Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this All Saints Sunday. We remember that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have gone before us in the faith and given to us models of godly living. And we, Lord, know that you have called us into sainthood even today. May we, Lord, be spurred on by the words of Scripture, by the call of your Spirit to be your people in the world, loving and with generosity, caring for those around us, knowing that our inheritance is fixed and it is sured because of who you are and who you have called us to be through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, we thank you for these 17 names up here who are now in your nearer presence. Let them, Lord, enjoy the fullness of their salvation. And those of us here, Lord, who await that day when we come into your nearer presence, would you even today give us a fresh taste of your spirit, a fresh call to be servants of you in all things. Now this morning, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart in this place be acceptable in your sight. For we depend upon you, we look to you as our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So if you asked your average person on the street to name for you their hero, the person who they most admire in the world, who do you think they would name? Well, studies show that these days it's almost certainly going to be a movie star. Or it might be um, someone who's excellent at sports, or for some strange reason these days, someone who's really good at video games. And maybe it's someone that's made it, that's full of fame and wealth and power and good looks, because that's the way our world, world values things these days. If you find someone who's made it in the eyes of the world, who's living the good life, has all of the money and the power, and the, they're handsome or they're beautiful, then... They are the ones in our world who have achieved hero status. I imagine if your children have posters on their walls, they're posters of Taylor Swift or LeBron James. Well, today is All Saints Sunday, where we have a chance to make our own posters for the day when we remember and celebrate a much deeper and richer understanding of what it means to live the good life, a life that's grounded and moored in humility and trusting not in ourselves nor in the things of the world, but rather relying on the goodness of the God of all creation. Today is a Sunday we set aside each year to thank the Lord for all of his saints as we remember those who've gone before us in the faith, who are in the nearer presence of the Lord and who have run their race and have finished it well, and now rest from their earthly labors, living as saints before the throne of God. But we also remember our own high calling to live as saints even now, having been called holy by the God who is holy and who has made us his own through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So if you look on the front cover of today's service leaflet, you'll find on it an icon from the ninth century of All Saints Sunday. And this image of all the saints, you see all of these names, there'll be a test at the end of the service and you can tell me who all of them are. Uh, this is this great cloud of witnesses that surround Jesus Christ. They're saints and martyrs who now live in glory, having been made holy by the God who sanctifies those who give their lives to him in faith. Now, most of those depicted on this image have died for their faith. Many of them are martyrs. They suffered and lived lives of poverty and need. They knew calamity and humiliation and sorrow, all because of their allegiance to the gospel of Jesus. And yet, with all that gold paint and all of that beauty and all of those circles around their faces, we see them now living in glory after all the things of the world, all the fame and wealth and beauty, all of those things 
have passed away. We had a gathering this past week of our 5.2 fellowship. And if you're visiting among us or new among us or just confused, um, our 5.2 fellowship are our fisher folk wannabes, right? They're the kids that are too young to join the adults at the table. So we have our own party. And it's 5.2 because we named it after the five loaves and the two fish, okay? We want to be fisher folk, but all we have are two fish right now. So we'll one day grow up. Well, we had 5.2 Fellowship over at Valerie and Matt Owen's house. And I was so thrilled that all over her house, Valerie has cut out the various images that we put on our service leaflets and the little descriptions of what the images mean that we give you all so you're not completely befuddled by them. And she's framed them, and they're all over her house. And this particular one is right next to their kitchen table. And when I saw that, I thought, what a thing to see every time you gather around the kitchen table to eat as a family, that this is the goal of our life. I, I want to find my face. I want to see your face in that great cloud of witnesses. This is a poster worth having on your wall, right? This is the kind of glory to which we aspire it's not a glory that we create for ourselves or achieve on our own. It's a glory given to us by the glory of God. I want to be among those. I want you to be among those. I want little Annie to grow up to be among those who find our worthiness in his worthiness. Who find our holiness not in our skills or our looks or our successes, but in him, the God who makes us holy by his gracious will. What makes a saint a saint? Well, our reading from Ephesians today answers that question. Paul teaches us in every sentence of this gorgeous reading from Ephesians that it is God who makes a saint. It is God who makes us into saints and not we ourselves. We do not earn our status. We don't deserve being holy. There's nothing we could do to make ourselves acceptable to him it's simply God's gracious gift to us in Jesus. And those whom God makes his saints, Paul tells us, become joint heirs with Jesus. We inherit everything that's been promised to Jesus becomes ours as the sons and daughters of God. That's what the promise in verse 11 is all about. And this is true not so that we can walk around going, we have really achieved something, haven't we? Like we don't walk around sh shining out our own glory in all of this, but rather we're reflecting the glory of the one who has made us glorious in his whole company of saints. That's what Paul's talking about in verse 14. In verse 13, when God marks us with the seal of the Holy Spirit, that is a radical truth that should just blow our minds that God has given us his own spirit so that that promised day when we are fully redeemed, we've already had a foretaste of it in the gift of his spirit, that pledge of that day when we will actually find our faces in this image. Paul makes it clear that sainthood is indeed a future status to which we aspire, but it's also something that's true today. You know, I love the fact that on a baptismal Sunday, we keep all of our children in the room. So children, I want you to hear me right now. You are being made into a saint of God. But if you have been baptized and you are growing in the knowledge and love of him, you are already growing into your status as a saint. I'm kind of glad that Evan's not old enough to really understand what I'm talking about because the next time I put him in time out, right, he'll be like, wait, Dad, I'm a saint, so don't <laughs> mess with me too much, right? But Paul tells us that the gift of the Spirit is that our eyes are enlightened and we're given the spirit of wisdom and revelation even now. We're God's Holy One, called and ordained to lead all of creation in a great chorus of praise, not just in the future, my friends, but even now, we will be saints, but we are saints today if we have hidden our lives in Christ. And this reminds us, like how are we living our lives on Sunday evening and Monday through Friday 
How are we amongst our family or in our place of business? Are we walking and talking and exhibiting the fruits of our sainthood? Or do we experience our sainthood on Sunday morning and then tuck it away so we can get back out into the world and live the lives of a fallen and broken world? No, we bring the good news of Jesus everywhere that we go. Broken and sinful people like you and me have been made holy to the working of God's gracious will. So, so if we have been made saints by God, both as a promise of our future and a current reality, then how should we live day to day? If, if, if God makes saints, then how does God call saints to live? Well, today's gospel lesson from Luke is an answer to that question. For if we, unworthy as we are, have been loved by God this much, then we have a duty and an obligation and a sacred honor to show forth that kind of love in the world. I think it's always interesting when we get this reading for All Saints Sunday, when we read the Beatitudes, you wonder why we might read these about who is great and who is in full of woe. Well, we read the Beatitudes because they teach us the goals to which saints should aspire. We must not seek after wealth or fame or power and status in this world, but rather we're called to pursue humility and patience and sacrifice. If God loves the poor and the persecuted and the hungry, then it follows that we as saints should be those who are showing God's blessing in all that we do to the poor and the persecuted and the hungry. Beginning in verse 27, Jesus describes how a saint should live. A saint should love his enemies. A truth that we could all, to Stanley, learn, to learn afresh in this divided and acrimonious political climate of the culture of our day. A saint chooses generosity, realizing that our long-term security is never going to be found in the size of of our 401ks, but rather in the promise that we are joint heirs with Jesus. A saint is merciful, knowing that God has shown us mercy and then sends us into the world as saints to bear that mercy into the world. Again, we will be saints, but we are saints even now because of Jesus' righteousness, not because of our own. And so our call is to live like a saint, to be people of love and forgiveness and generosity and mercy. I'm going to be preaching this evening over at Trinity Presbyterian Church. And there's an evening prayer service there this evening that has a, a world-famous organist at the keyboard to give us choral evensong. Um, but they've called that service this evening, For All the Saints, a service of comfort and hope. And resurrection. And I love that subtitle. I love that language for this holy day because All Saints is indeed a day of comfort and hope and resurrection. It's about hope because we know that God has chosen us. It's about resurrection because the choosing gives us an eternal promise of our future. And it is about comfort. Because even as we remember our dead on these banners on this Sunday morning, we know that every one of these 70 names is someone who is not dead forever. For the saints, life is changed. It's not ended by death. For the saints, we are dead in Christ and made holy by the will of God, and they dwell now with their Creator in His nearer and abiding and loving presence. All Saints is a Sunday of hope, for as we baptize precious Annie this morning, we're going to be hoping for her what we hope for for all of our children, and indeed for ourselves, that we might bring her to the knowledge and love of the Lord, and she, like us, might not reject the offer that our God extends to us. He wants to make us holy, and He will make us holy. And all we have to do is surrender to his will and allow him to make us saints. All we must do is to cease finding glory in ourselves or in the things of the world. Cease bowing down to the statues and the idols of money or status or power. And kneel down before the Lord of 
mercy, and compassion, for he is our hope. All Saints is a Sunday of resurrection, for even as our Savior was raised from the grave to new life in a body that will never fail, so we too have been promised that we will be raised in Christ, that all 17 of these named up here will be raised like Christ to live in a new heaven and a new earth in a resurrection body like His that will never fail. And we will see Him, not in a mirror darkly, but rather face to face. All Saints has this wonderful symmetry to it. I love to remind you that these banners up here, Christ's own forever, mirror that one that you see hanging over there for Annie that names her as Christ's own forever, the beginning of a saintly life, the end of a saintly life on earth, and the beginning of a saintly life in heaven. That is the glorious promise of all saints. That's comfort, and that's hope, and that's resurrection. So, speaking of Taylor Swift and LeBron James posters, uh, some years ago, I found this rather tacky poster uh, in a closet at my former parish. So you probably can't really see what it is, and the choir probably can't see it over the banners, and it's the most awkward sermon prop of all time, because it's huge. Um, But it is a 365 saints in little postage size images in a really tacky plastic frame. Um, It was in a closet because I imagine some staff person looked at it and realized that of these 365 saints, um, uh, like me, she only knew about 30 of them because most of them are not in the Bible. And so she thought a little bit too unprotestant and so she tucked it away. Um, But I stole it, um, so don't tell. And I took it home and... um, I like it because even though I don't know who all these people are, they're not in our great uh, list of saints in our prayer books, they do remind me that um, those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we pray that we might find ourselves in that list of people that have lived faithful lives and have set examples to the world about how to live godly living. And if you're anything like me, you, you might be the saint that kind of creeps in at the 11th hour on the last day of the year, right? Or maybe your picture might be somewhere in September as the patron saint of lost causes. Um, But um, like these 365 saints, we pray that we might be God's people. Remembering that our sainthood is not dependent on us, but on the God who gives good gifts to his children. So I look out there at my fellow saints in Christ Jesus, and I wish you all a joyous All Saints Sunday as we remember our dead before the Lord and we find in Him our hope. As we celebrate the comfort and joy of the resurrection and as we commend Annie's life to Him, trusting that the one who makes us His saints is faithful to bring Annie all the way to His throne room, faithful to bring all of you into His throne room, and has been faithful to accept these into his nearer presence because he chose us. Amen? Amen.